Hello, Spooks Inspectors, and welcome back to... Wait. Sorry. Hello. My name is Dustin Smith, and today I'll be discussing John Coltrane as my master for the assessment. Now, why did I choose John Coltrane? Because he wanted to put his voice into the music he created. He spent many years learning different styles, and when he was ready, he crafted powerful emotional responses to the notes that he played. I chose him because he kept his primal inclination about emotional and spiritual longings that he wanted to verbalize, as Green put in his book Mastery on page 30. This resonates within me because I want to do something very similar. He was able to achieve this after hearing Charlie Bird Parker perform and it touched Coltrane to his very core. But what I found most interesting about Coltrane was that it took him over 10 years of playing in his apprenticeship to finally find his voice and invoke that emotional response that he longed for, as Green put on page 206. Now, if John Coltrane was alive and well today, and I was able to interview him, two questions that really jumped to me right now. The first being, is there any part of the process during your 10-year apprenticeship that you found to be unnecessary and a waste of time? With a follow-up being, if you had the opportunity to go back and avoid said path, would you, and choose something else that you wanted to pursue further in length, or did you find that it was necessary to discover what you did and didn't like about music at the time through this process? The reason I ask this question is because I want to know if a master has the ability to take a step back and go, I don't need to waste my time with this, I'd rather go further down the line with this would they or do they feel it's necessary to kind of go through the good and bad of it of the overall learning process so that they can then truly define who they are as a master and utilize it to their advantage the second question that i would like to ask is robert green says your music inspires an anxious and urgent tone for the listener and claims that it has a direct correlation to your psychological makeup of course talking about john coltrane of all the feelings that music can create, do you purposely pursue that tone or is that simply a byproduct within your overall vision of the music you create? The reason I want to ask this question is because I want to know if Coltrane went into the mindset of, I want this emotion, therefore I'm going to play these notes because they, ha they resonate within that sort of emotional framework. Or does it, it just happens? He thinks a melody, a tune, something that he wants to play, and that just happens to be the emotional response invoked by it. The reason I want to do this is because I want video games to invoke an emotional response out of players. And knowing the mindset behind somebody who draws it out like music would really be helpful understanding what I need to think of when I do create games like this. Moving past this, Green goes on to talk about uh, deadly realities. And two that really resonate within me that could be an issue is laziness and rigidity. Green discusses in his book that laziness leads to quick solutions. Because I am lazy, I sometimes look for that quick fix to a problem rather than giving it my full attention and time. This can lead to procrastination and in some instances even that has burned me pretty bad. Um, so in order to kind of get around this, I must instill in my mind that not all problems can be delayed, pushed back, or ignored. If I don't, laziness can get the better of me and thus perpetuate my problems. Rigidity is not wanting to change how things are done. It is taking previous solutions from the past and applying them to the future, thinking that they'll do the exact same job. This goes hand in hand with laziness. Because laziness is looking for that quick solution, rigidity is t uh, going with what you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable, you're most likely going to take the shortcut there. Uh, in order to avoid rigidity, I have to open my mind up to all possible solutions and not be narrow-minded as to what can, what can and cannot be solutions to the overall effort. The solutions themselves, they may be better cheaper and more effective than what I had previously working on. Overall, I think my time is up and with that, here's my reference pages. With that guys, I want to thank you for listening to my video and uh, hopefully I made some kind of sense with it. Thank you for your time.